Children, welcome back. I'm glad you're going to listen to me again today, and, and I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. As usual, I first of all, just quickly want to have a word to the parents, and what an eventful week. Hey, everything is turned upside down again. In South Africa, those of you that live here know that our schools got closed again, so all of a sudden, all of us are back with the children are at home, some are on holiday, some are still working, and us as parents must now... Again, engage with them and engage with their work and you know, almost start that whole process of lockdown over again. And I just want to say, you know what we need to do, parents? We need to surround ourselves with friends and with people that can help us. I want to share with you a very well-known verse out of Exodus 17. That's where Joshua was fighting the Amalekites. And um, God said to Moses at that stage, lift your hands up. While your hands are up in the air, Joshua will win this fight. However, if you put your hands down, he won't. So parents, I want to quickly just read this to you because I want to encourage you today to get friends. In um, Exodus 17 verse 12, it reads, When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on the one side and one on the other side so that these hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites, and he won them with his sword. Parents, you have to get friends. In this time where we need to keep our hands up, where we need to keep our children up, we need to surround ourselves with close friends that can help us keep our hands up. And I just want to invite you and say, if you don't have friends, or if you feel that you, your friends is not going to help you, please come to the Wholeness Center. The details are on the screen and it will be later on in the video as well. Please just come and talk to us and come and connect with us. We want to share with you and we want to journey with you in this time. And we don't want anybody to be alone. We don't want anybody to feel that they can't, you know, that they can't do anything. So please come and come and talk to us so that we can help you. Or come and talk to close friends of yours so that they can help you. Thank you very much for this. And now, kids, it's your turn. So please sit up closer. Parents, please give them the technology. I think it's the kids' turns now, and I'm excited about that. So let's start with a prayer. Lord God, thank you very much for this time again. Thank you that we can read again out of your word, that we can learn from you, and that we can just know that you are the Almighty God. You are the one that was and that is and is to come. You are the one that loved us first. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read to us today first, and I want to read to us a story out of Jeremiah 18. It's a very interesting piece where God spoke to Jeremiah about a, an example of how he wants to use us as his children. I'm going to read to you out of the NIV version, Jeremiah 18. So kids, listen closely. It's going to be an interesting thing to read. It says, Jeremiah 18 verse, uh, Jeremiah 18, verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hands, Israel. Kids, this is an amazing story. God sends Jeremiah to the potter to go and look at how a potter forms clay and makes something out of clay. And there's three things that I want to highlight today. For me, that's important if we look at God being the potter and us being the clay. The first, I want to share with you the stuff that's on my, on my table. This is a beautiful vase. There's some very strange looking flowers in it. I like these flowers. And I think you can easily see it from where you sit. It's a quite big vase and I can showpiece it. and I can put it in front of everybody. And it actually looks beautiful. 
And some of it is actually still a bit shiny because when I bought it, it was very shiny. There's another thing that's also made of clay. This is a little pot. It's actually broken. Luckily, you can't see that. But you put dough in it and you make a bread. So it's not pretty. I'm not going to display it somewhere in my house. I'm going to use it. It's very functional. I'm going to use it in my kitchen. And then I've got this little thing. I'm not even sure you guys can see it, but I'm happy that you don't because it's so small. It's blue. It's actually a hippopotamus. And that's a small ornament that somebody gave my daughter. I don't know who gave it to her. I actually don't know what she does with it. She actually throws it away somewhere. But you know what's the reality? It's still something that a potter made. And I think that's the first thing that I want to highlight out of this session with a potter. The potter decides that we are each one unique. And why we are on earth is something that we need to find from him. Some of us are beautiful. Some of us are very functional. Some of us are so small, we don't even know what we're going to do. But we shouldn't be dismayed. The important thing is we're, each one of us is unique. And the most important thing is we shouldn't compare ourselves. This vase can't be bragging and saying he's so beautiful and he stands in front of everything because he can't make a wonderful bread. This vase can't say I make a wonderful bread, that's why I'm so important, because he can't be small and go to small places. Something that we can use this thing for is actually as a paperweight because it's quite heavy. So it's quite a lot of clay that went into this little hippopotamus. So each one of us are unique, and the potter makes us unique. God makes us unique. He folds us uniquely. And sometimes when he doesn't like what he sees, he starts over, and he makes us again until we are what he wants us to be. The second thing that I want to highlight today is that God doesn't stop working with us. He didn't, in this example that we read in the Bible, he didn't stop the potter didn't stop and say, oh, I didn't like this, throw that away. He mushed the clay together again and he started folding a new pot. He started making a new pot. He never stops until what he makes is perfect in his eyes. Children, God will not stop working with you until you are perfect in his eyes. God wants to work with every one of us daily. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't tell us, Oh, you're useless. Don't worry. You'll never get there. He doesn't do that. He continues to work with us every day, every second, because he is the big potter, that clay that takes us as clay and works with us until we are the perfect vessel. And the last thing that I want to share with you today that's on my heart, that we just need to look at this potter and clay analogy, is that we have to be soft as clay. A potter cannot work with hard clay. If you look at this clay, a potter cannot do anything with this except break it. This pot of clay can't now become something different because it's hard clay. It's already baked. It's done what it's got. We have to be soft clay. We have to be soft in the hands of God. We have to be soft so that he can work with us. But how does he work with us? He works with us through people, mom and dad, our teachers, other grown-ups, that tell us what to do. He works with us through this word. He tells us what he wants us in his word, how he wants to form us, how we need to change, what we need to do. He talks to us through prayer, through praise and worship. So God wants us to be pliable is the, is the big English word. He wants us to be soft. He wants to work with us and he wants to continuously work with us and he wants us to be, remain soft until he's finished. And only when he's finished, he'll bake us so that we become a vessel that can be used in his purpose. So guys, today I just want to encourage you, let's be like the clay in the potter's hand because the potter is never going to leave you. Ever, ever, ever is he going to leave you. If you soft in his hands, he's going to keep on working with you. He's going to keep on working with you. The potter also says that he's make everything unique. He's not going to make two things the same. That's what God promises us in his words. Each one of us is unique. We shouldn't compare ourselves to others. We should just wait and listen to the Lord and wait unto the Lord so that he can share with us what's his vision and purpose. I hope you're going to enjoy the week. And thank you very much for sharing this time with me. And I hope you're going to have a great week. Thank you.